Hi and welcome to Biostock Studio. I am here today with Martin Oermark, CEO at X-Brain Biopharma, who is here to tell us more about the company. Welcome. Thank you. And let's start with what does X-Brain do? We develop uh, so-called uh, biosimilars, which are follow-on drugs to already approved biological drugs, which we then can launch post-patent uh, expire at a significant price discount versus uh, the originated product. And you're carrying out a commercial launch this year. Could you tell us how is that going? Uh, exactly. Uh, we have a commercialization partner uh, called Stada for our first uh, biosimilar, uh, Ximlusi, biosimilar to an eye drug called Lucentis. It's launched as we speak, essentially, by, partner, by Stada in, our first, in the first countries in Europe. And uh, we're very much looking forward to this. Very exciting. It's a 4 billion euro market opportunity in Europe. We have um, uh, great expectations um, on uh, the sales and uh, the income generation to the company during the course of the year. And could you elaborate a bit on what the deal looks like with Stada? Yeah, so um, according to the agreement with Stada, we're entitled to 50% of the profits uh, that uh, is generated from sales uh, uh, across Europe. I see. And how would you say that the attitude towards biosimilar is different between different markets around the world? Yeah, there are um, countries uh, where um, um, it's stronger drive towards uh, going for biosimilars in the interest of uh, reducing um, costs of the drugs and also where lobbies um, by the originator developers haven't uh, had as much influence as in, as in other territories. And um, uh, there we can see penetration or market share to biosimilars uh, go close to 100% during the first year. Nordics um, are included in that category of countries. Uh, then there are countries where uh, the, the in, um, incentives for going towards uh, biosimilars hasn't been as strong or haven't been working as well for various reasons, uh, where penetration is typically not, not uh, as quick uh, as in the Nordics. Uh, so they're a little, it, it's a little bit different uh, dependent on, uh, I would say, how strong the incentives have been and uh, also um, uh, you know, how, they, how they worked and the pressure uh, from the payers mainly of driving down costs. Okay, and if we look ahead a bit, what can we expect from the company in the near future? Yeah, so this year, of course, is about uh, the launch and uh, sales of Ximlusi in Europe. Uh, so that's going to be very interesting to follow during the course of the year, how sales are ramping up. Uh, so that's one thing. And then for Ximlusi, of course, it's the regulatory process versus FDA and approval in the US and launch in the US, hugely important as well. And then, as I spoke about, we're taking certain measures to reduce production cost of this product, which will kick in in 2024 and significantly reduce uh, uh, the production cost and also uh, introduction of um, a, a second format of the product, the pre syringe, compared to the already approved vial. So it's exciting for Ximlusi, but then we are also um, uh, targeting to do a licensing deal with um, our oncology portfolio uh, by similars to Optiva Ketrude and Darselex during the course of this year, uh, something which we also hope we're going to be able to get back to the market with the communication around. I see, it will be interesting to follow. Thank you so much for watching this interview and thank you for coming. Thank you.